We all bring our stories to the meditation. Sometimes they're helpful stories, sometimes they're not. Even the Buddha brought his stories to the meditation. That first knowledge in the night of his awakening was basically his story. Looking back over many lifetimes, And the big issues were his name, his appearance, his food, his experience of pleasure and pain, and then how he passed away. That's pretty much it, the life of living beings. Name, appearance, food, pleasure, pain, death. Not much of a story. And yet we can elaborate that into all kinds of things. and spend our whole lives going over certain details, certain incidences, incidents in the stories, especially the painful ones. Or you can go back and look back on some pleasures that you're missing now, and those past pleasures can get painful too. And so the Buddha found two ways to get out of his stories. One was to generalize. Think about all living beings. That was his second knowledge. question arose, if he had previous lifetimes, how about other beings? And maybe looking at other beings, he could begin to see some general patterns. And that's precisely what happened. He could see how beings died and then were reborn based on their actions, based on the quality of their intentions shaped by their views. And from there he went to the third knowledge, which took that knowledge of the second knowledge, the understanding, the pattern he saw in the second knowledge, and applied it to the present moment, looking at his views and his intentions in the present moment, taking them apart. And that was how he got out of stories altogether. So as we meditate, we want to think about that pattern that the Buddha followed. We've got to get out of our narratives, out of our stories, otherwise they just drive us crazy. You go over the same old movies over and over again. Movies that if they were put up on the screen you wouldn't pay to watch. And yet because of the I and the me, my pain, my pleasure, my appearance, my food, You get hooked into watching them over and over again. So we want to get out of those stories. First thing is to start generalizing. Think of all the beings in the world who've had appearances they didn't like, or food they didn't like, or missed the food that they once had that they did like, or suffered both pleasure and pain. You're not the only one. Think about that often. These are things that we all undergo. And the particulars of our appearance and food and pain and pleasure may enthrall us, but you've got to look at the general pattern. And then from the general pattern, as it takes the sting out of your own personal narrative, then you can come to the present moment and see what you're doing in the present moment that's contributing to more pain and pleasure that doesn't have to be there. And what do you have in the present moment? You've got fabrications. That's what one of the definitions of fabrication is intention. So what kind of fabrications do you have here? Well, you've got the breath. That's the bodily fabrication. You've got directed thought and evaluation. Those are verbal fabrications. And then you've got feelings and perceptions. And the intentional element in those, that's mental fabrication. So these are the things you want to understand. You understand them by learning how to master them, approaching them as a skill, 
What's the most skillful way to breathe? What's the most skillful way to think about and evaluate your breath? What are the most skillful perceptions to apply to the breath? What kind of feelings do you want to develop out of the breath? As you get more and more absorbed in this, that really helps you get you out of your narratives. Remember my first year as a monk back in Thailand. I had a lot of time by myself, a lot more than you guys do. And sure enough, a lot of my old narratives from grade school, high school, college, family. kept coming back, coming back, coming back. But I found the one thing that kept me from going crazy was the fact that I had something to explore in the present moment, and that was the breath. And as I got more of a handle on the breath, got more absorbed in the breath, the fascination with the old narratives began to wane. And the understanding began to arise that if I really wanted to understand why I was suffering from those old past narratives, I'd like to see how I was causing suffering for myself in the present moment. And the brain excuse me, the, the breath was going to be a good good way to explore that. So the more absorbed you get in the breath is a very important way of getting out of those narratives and really into the big issue of why you're causing stress and suffering for yourself right now. You're not a passive observer. You're not here watching a TV show that you can either like or not like. You're actively creating the show. So it's important to look at how you think about the breath, how you perceive the breath. And this is where John Lee's instructions on the different levels of breath energy are really helpful. He talks about the levels of breath. There's the in and out breathing, then there's the breath that goes to the nerves and the blood vessels, courses through the body. And then there's that still breath he talks about. And it's important you realize that all three levels of breath are happening all the time. And it depends on which one you focus on, what you're going to notice. And also, which one you focus on is going to determine, determine how strong your concentration can be, how steady it can be. As you work first with the in and out breath, you can get the mind to a certain level of concentration. But that only goes so far. You're still changing from in to out, in to out. And you may have the sense that the in breath is something very different from the out breath. So you've got two things you're watching. But then if you can start getting more and more in touch with this, the spreading of the breath energy through the blood vessels and the nerves, that gives you a steadier perception. At first it's not all that steady because you're exploring. This is the direct of thought and evaluation. You're exploring how the breath energy affects different parts of the body, mm -hmm. which parts you tense up as you breathe in, which parts you squeeze as you breathe out. Then working through them section by section. And you find that as you get one section cleared up, a section that you just cleared up a few minutes ago starts tensing up again. It's like the old Thai story of throwing live crabs into a basket. You throw one or two in, and then you've got them in the basket, then you look for your third, and by the time you throw the third one in, ah, the first crab's crawled out. So again, this stage of the meditation is, is fairly active. There's a lot of directed thought and a lot of evaluation. But the important thing is that you are consistently with issue, issues of the breath. That's what enables us to be a state of concentration, even though there's some activity, even though there's some moving around. It's within a prescribed area. You've withdrawn from unskillful qualities, withdrawn from sensual passions. And you're right here with the, all 
altar. Complexities of the breath energy in the body. But you'll find as you work through the complexities, things begin to hook up, and after all, they stay hooked up. And that's when the perception of breath can get more unified. You're less and less concerned with the in and out breathing, and more with this, the state of the breath energy flowing through the body. And you see, there is a tendency sometimes as you breathe in, the, the breath channels in the body seem to expand. And then as you breathe out, they seem to contract. This is where you've got to make up your mind. You're going to stay, keep them open all the time, both in breath and out breath. So it's just open, open, open. Open breath channels. That can be your one perception. You don't have to think about in and out. Just everything open, everything open. By this time, you should have noticed where the different nodes of breath energy are, the ones that, that are kind of like the intersections that get closed off, that you can close off a whole row just by closing off the one intersection. But at the same time, once you've got the intersection open, you've got the whole road open. So focus your attention on the intersections. That's what John Lee's pointing out in terms of what he calls the resting spots of the breath. Say you're focused in the middle of the chest. Keep that sense of the middle of the chest wide open all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. And then think of that sense of openness spreading throughout the body wherever it's going to go. Expanding awareness so it fills the body as well. So you're thinking all the way open, all the way in, all the way out, and the, the in and out became less and less and less important, and the openness that's continuous, that takes center stage. With that perception, you can get the mind to a much more solid level of concentration. Just maintain that one perception. There will still be some in and out breathing, but it gets more and more subtle and impinges less and less on your awareness. And it's in this way that you can get more in touch with that sense of the real still breath. It's not affected by any in and out or all, at all. No sense of motion at all, just there, filling the body. So this element of perception, this mental fabrication, plays a really important role in how you relate to the present moment. And as you learn to fabricate in more subtle ways, more solid ways, more unchanging ways, you find that the, the mind can settle down more and more solidly. And some people, when they get to this stage, think that mind isn't doing anything at all. No self, no actor, nothing. It's actually just one consistent thing. When there's that one consistent thing, you don't notice the motions. And so the sense of actor gets less and less prominent in the mind. It's more just a sense of being or just being here. But the being here is still an activity. It's still a fabrication, but it's a skillful fabrication. It's part of your path. This is how you begin to understand fabrications, by mastering the fabrications that give you a sense of ease and well-being in the present moment that allow the mind to settle down. Once it's settled down, then it can see the subtleties a lot more clearly. So work on getting in the right position. At this point, your, your stories and narratives are far away, because you've got something really fascinating in the present moment. You see it. You approach the present moment with the right skills. It really does make a huge difference in the amount of pleasure you get out of it. And that's an important insight right there. 